There's a lot of complaints about pollution. No buses will be idling. They'll bring the children and drop them off. Garbage disposal we've heard about. The garbage will be in, in the restricted containers and taken away by private cars. Um, people in the neighborhood, uh, there were complaints about young people walking around the neighborhood urinating on lawns, throwing garbage all over the place. Uh, these people will be in school. When they get to this building, we go to school. When they go home, they'll be you know, going on their buses or vans. So basically, that's the zoning issues which I've laid out. And how many people are going to live there, sleep there? Uh, there's going to be, uh, uh, and now we have a Rabbi Brooker. He can spoke to some of the issues about the, uh, about the number of <coughs> children who will be living there. But this has to be part of the application, right? That, that you have a set number of kids that can actually live there. Right. Not, not how much are going to, but like, what's the maximum? Six, 64. <laughs> right. So. Um, so some of these questions might be answered by Rabbi Brooke and Rabbi Schenfeld is here also. Okay. That actually brings up. <coughs> who's the applicant? The applicant is uh, Karen Poulos, who, which nonprofit owns the three buildings now and proposing the school. They're, they're Hasidic, Lubavitch, Set, and that's who the applicant is. But it's this Rabbi Shemtov is here, who is proposing to build a school, who's had a school here, and the city found that it was not operating properly. They moved out, and, and the kids are now in Valley Street. And the applicant is a different applicant than the <coughs> group that's down the block. No the question block. about it. The, the Welcome Apple. Center. <coughs> it's a different applicant. Is that correct? Or a absolutely. Applicant? It's a different applicant. Yes. So it's a separate corporation, separate, separate sect, if I'm not mistaken. No, the same sect, the same Lubavitcher, but... Uh, I think, you know, as a matter of fact, I try to call Rabbi Refson, and people tell me he's been cooperative, he worked with the community, he operates that uh, building, and he, I haven't been able to But it's a different group. Different, uh, definitely a different group. We're just trying to get the players down, different that's all. Because I know it's a little bit confusing at the community board, <coughs> so I'm just right, trying to may, right. clarify what's going on. Different group. Okay, and so, folks, will be if you built out to maximum right now, could you go taller than you are now? Say that it could be. If you built out to your maximum FAR right now, 0.5, is it now built out to 0.5? Uh, well, the building there, that's there. Well, there were three um, residential buildings. I'm not sure what they would add up to now. I think they were built before the 61 resolution, I believe, or maybe just after. But so you think they're above the FAR right now? Maybe just, I'm just saying because it's grandfather. R right. It might right, be. Right, right, right. right. And it's, those are three one family buildings that are there now. Well, can I have Rabbi Brooker? All right, Rick, if you want to come up here, introduce yourself for the record, right. identify your... He'll tell your, you who um, he is and what he has to do with the school. Yep. Uh, my name is Adam Rooker. I have officially qualified for the title of a rabbi, but I don't wear it out too much. Uh, I'm, like sorry. Better? Uh, generally not very good at public speaking. My apologies for any stuttering or anything in advance. Uh, I'm assistant to the director, uh, Karen, Karen Polis, the, uh, the, uh, the applicant, and I've dealt with uh, many aspects of the, of the application. I'm not quite fully versed on all the legalese. I'm not quite fully versed on all of the legal issues, but I should be able to handle a good number of the questions. Okay, uh, well the first question is, per the application, do you have capacity for 330 and you have uh, 64 beds for students. So my question is, how do the balance of students get to your school on daily basis? Um, 
we've uh, um, asked students, the majority of the students who will be coming and leaving from the school on a daily basis are, are for, the, for the younger grades in the elementary and the elementary, not the students who will actually be residing in the facility. The students residing in the facility are only trying to be there from, uh, from, old, from older grades, um, 32, 32 students each for each of those. Uh, uh, the students who will be coming in, uh, coming in here will be uh, coming in using, uh, uh, using bus, uh, bus services from, uh, from Queens, Long Island, and some and and Crown, and Crown Heights. Can you characterize approximately? You, you mentioned Queens, Long Island, and Crown Heights. Mm -hmm. Would you say a third from each location? Can you give us an idea of how many students will be in the area? Uh, I believe it's um, roughly one quarter from Long, one quarter from Long Island and Queens, and uh, and the balance from Crown Heights. I do, I do not have a specific demographic breakdown at this point. I have to, so, uh, have to get back to you with that. So the bus services that will be coming to this location, uh, can you tell us the capacity of those buses? Roughly, roughly 75 students a bus. We've heard, we're, still, we're still making our inquiries as, uh, for, as, uh, as to which bus companies we're looking for. We're looking at the other schools to see um, what, what services there are. We don't want to retain and maintain our own. We want to use a, we want to use a hired service. Okay, so we're talking about three to four buses to deliver the children or the students, and three to four buses to pick them up at the end of the day. Oh, uh, I think we have as many as, many as four, as, as many as five, potentially, depending on where the students come from. Uh, apparently, some cities, some cities in Long Island, provide buses as part of the city order ordinances. So the number of buses will, will depend on which cities are actually sending students to our school. So is this based on a current enrollment of students at another location? No, it's it's, it's extrapolated from that, but not but not completely. But they're not completely. So the students who would be coming to this school are currently attending school somewhere else. I don't have that information on this one. Um, I need to get back to you with that. Okay. And another question I have is the capacity for the synagogues that you have in your cellar are approximately 380 persons. So who would be using the synagogue for services? Is that part of your daily program or? The synagogue would mostly be for the use of the old, uh, for the use of the older grades. Uh, and the Jewish, uh, Jew, um, Jew, uh, Jewish fair often, often requires uh, a, fair, a fair amount of movement and Jewish study mm -hmm. typically requires sitting on, uh, sitting on multiple sides of the tables. So, so the standard chair arrangement uh, that you that you might see in a traditional sanctuary is not that it's not very fitting for the kind of prayer we use. So we need a larger floor space for uh, for a fewer number of people. But it was also intended as a uh, to be used as a secondary secondary facility when you maybe need when you need to um, clear it out for the kids to play, move the chairs off to the side and the like. And you have two conference rooms in the cellar also capacity for seventy five persons. Is that something that uh, students I, would use? I believe those were named as, um, as, uh, as sheer I don't. I, I did not check the exact the latest one of the plans, but that is where the, the, where the, uh, all the, where the older grades would be having their study centers, study their, le their lectures. So they would have lectures as well as the classroom work? The, the the typical study for the study for this age, for this age group is uh, some uh, some uh, some of the learning in lecture format and some of the learning in one on one review and preparation of the material either before or after the lecture. So the so the lecture rooms is more is uh, is much more typical a typical seating one person at the uh, up 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 the front and the rest of them facing, and so much a much smaller area. Whereas the learning that they would do in the synagogue synagogue area would be one on would be would be one on one one facing another over the chair. Okay, just to make sure I understand, we're just trying to understand mm -hmm. the, how this building would operate this sort of plan. So mm -hmm. I'm asking questions. Um, a, a second question I had was the mikvah. Is that a, um, I, I understand for ritual use, mm -hmm. uh, is that something that's part of the educational program for the students? The older division uh, will be of age, will, will, will be of age where, that's, where that is expected uh, of individuals of this, uh, of that particular religious denomination. Um, we also have a ritual bath on, on site uh, at, pre at present located at 220, 
4-60 Francis Lewis Boulevard. Um, that, one's fully, that one's fully filed according to, uh, according, to the, um, according to code, and that's operating as, as, as we speak. So we have an external entry for that, so it can continue in operation in this <coughs> building. Is that existing currently? Yes. So what we was using that? <coughs> that's, that's for the use of anyone coming into the business. Yeah, sure, okay. Um, and about your staff, you, according to the plan, you have approximately 18 staff? I do not have the staff, the staff breakdown on it, but this year I have to get back to it. Uh, well, my last question is, um, according to the application materials, the three houses are currently vacant, so I guess the question would be, what are the current uses of the existing houses? Well, other than the ritual bar, um, they cur they're currently not in use of any other storage. And approximately how many people are using the ritual bar as of this, as of this currently? I don't have a regular count. If you like to follow up, I can see if I can get you that number. Okay. Are you sticking around? Yeah, and we As also would like to hear from Rabbi Shemko. Okay, but we're going to go back and forth a little bit, if that's okay. And so, but if you guys can take a seat, you know, we're going to call in up other folks too. We'll go, maybe we'll go back and forth, maybe we'll let the senator testify, and then if the rabbi wants to come back. But from my perspective, the applicant's testimony is, is done, and we're just going to take a little break from it, okay? I'd like to request if Rabbi Shemtov would like to speak specifically on the on the on the religious aspect of the, of the location. Right. So I'm going to let him do it in a few minutes. I'd like the senator to say a few words first. Um, I want to make this clear today. Right. So this is about land use. This is about the use of the building. This is about the neighborhood. We understand the importance of the religious aspect of the building, and I think that. The relationship that has been formed with Chabad in the neighborhood has been a very good one. Um, and I think that there's been an attempt at community relations. Um, but this application is a different application. And I think the religious aspect has been talked about. We're happy to hear from him again. But I would like to give some other folks an opportunity to come in, especially the elected officials from the district first, OK? So, Senator Leroy Carmen, if you can join us, that'd be great. I can do that. Thank you. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Madam Borough President, community, all of you that uh, took time from your schedules to be here this morning. I just want to reiterate my opposition to this site, um, to, the, to the building of the school. Here, which would be totally out of context with this community. The Cambridge Heights community is an R2 community that has fought to maintain their status as one of the best um, minority communities in the country, um, maintaining their homes in a proper manner, fighting to be respected as a community, um, to make sure that they have uh, a quality of life that's equal to anyone else in the city. Uh, while they understand the need to respect and honor uh, the Rebbe, um, Menachem Stinson, and uh, everything that's done to um, ensure that uh, he is venerated properly. The need for a school there is just totally unnecessary. Um, you can be educated anywhere in the world. There's no need to be educated at that site in a facility that's out of context with everything in the neighborhood, where the front yard would be extended out beyond every other building and every other residence in the neighborhood uh, where their backyard would be um, extended. Uh, they're talking about a, a capacity of over 300 kids uh, with no facilities, no amenities, no opportunities. So they would have to share the playground with the existing school that's already overcrowded and that, that's on um, PS 176 and that's just not tenable because the school is already being expanded uh, for more capacity. Um, I think it's a, it's a horrible um, application in many ways, but if we're just going to focus on the land use issues today, 
uh, building a four-story building, uh, building something that would not have uh, amenities for the children, uh, recruiting children, as you already heard from Long Island, um, and other places to come into this facility is just not necessary. Children can be educated anywhere, um, you know, to, to be educated, and yet the, the need to be educated about um, Rabbi Stanson is understandable, but it does not have to be done at this site. Uh, it does not have to be done, a site that does not have to be built in this community that would be totally out of context with the residents in the area. And as you'll hear from the residents in the area, they're still fighting to have their homes respected, to have their driveways respected, they're still having problems with people disrespecting their homes by um, deliberately sometimes um, imputing on their um, home, on their property, still doing things on their property that are in fact nasty, um, just to put it in a simple context. And so there's still a, a need to continue to improve the relations between uh, the visiting community and the residents that are at that community. So I'm going to be brief and succinct. I think this is a total unnecessary application. I, I'm confident that all of the people here will articulate the specific needs as to why it is, but on the land use needs, on the need of a school in, in, in general uh, to come out of a community and to be planted in a community with no support services, no food, no amenities, no recreation, um, no opportunity for the children to do anything but be stuck inside a building, um, I think is unfair to those children as well. Um, so I, I just don't understand the need for it. It's totally unnecessary. There are many other places that these children can be educated. And there's also other questions about exactly who would recruit the children for this uh, particular facility, which is just confusing to me, especially when I hear they're going to be looking to 